has the, has a prime minister got any right to insist that students are double vaccinated if a university doesn't want to follow that? Well, uh, my personal view on this is that in this country in general, we've not needed to make vaccines compulsory um, by providing them free of charge, giving people good information uh, and making it e essentially easy and straightforward. Uh, people, generally speaking, make the, the right decision and, and get vaccinated. So uh, I, I suppose my instincts for students, certainly in my university in Bristol, would be to provide vaccination to make it very uh, clear to them why it's a good idea for them mm. personally and also for the for, for their colleagues and their friends and for the institution to do so and expect them to come forward and be immunized. Um, certainly the students throughout the pandemic so far have been really compliant and really willing to do everything that was necessary. So I don't see why it will be different for this. Yeah. I mean, some people might listen to this understandably, um, Adam, and say, well, hang on a sec. If you're a student, why do you need a jab at all? You're almost un unlikely, almost completely unlikely to die. You're almost completely unlikely to get a serious illness. Um, so why bother? I mean, the world of medicine usually resists giving any kind of pharmaceutical unless you really, really have to. Yeah, absolutely right. We, we shouldn't be doing things unnecessarily. Um, on the other hand, there are, there are a couple of very good reasons why young people, whether they're students or not, should be thinking hard about getting these vaccines. The first is that, unfortunately, at the moment, we are now seeing uh, young people coming into hospital, certainly in Bristol, uh, people under the age of 30 with no other previous health problems, but getting sick enough with COVID to need oxygen and in one or two cases, even intensive care. So it's not like there's no risk at all. But the other side to it is that the it's becoming clear that these vaccines don't just protect you as an individual, they actually reduce your risks of uh, passing the infection on to others. Uh, and certainly young people have had massive disruption to their lives mm. over the last 18 months because of the spread of the virus and the restrictions. Students, <laughs> even more than others in some ways, their, their, their education has been massively uh, disrupted in the same way that school children have. Sure. And so by being immunized, they can reduce the risk of that happening. Uh, outbreaks in, in universities, and, and further disruption in the next academic year. So I think there are good personal reasons for for taking the vaccine. And uh, the only reason uh, I, know, I raise that, Adam, and I, I have a, I have a real sympathy with people who do what you do do for a living as well. I mean, it used to be that if you went to a party and you got stuck in a kitchen and somebody said they were a copper or a doctor, then or everybody had a question to throw at the doctor or the police officer. And now you guys have taken a new prominence in the in the public narrative. And I can just see you sitting there with your glass of red wine in the corner, never getting drunk because everybody's got the same questions they want to throw at the man that knows about immunisation and vaccinations. And I'm sure you get lots of this, but you can understand why some people, Adam, you know, perhaps scratch their head and think, hang on, that still doesn't make sense because most people are double jab. All the vulnerable people are double jab. Young people aren't really <clears throat> statistically going to die or get ill. Why are we doing this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's perfectly reasonable for you to say this because it is a puzzling uh, phenomenon. And uh, the truth is that we constantly tell people to get immunized or to have their children immunized so that they or their child doesn't get sick. And we fail to uh, explain adequately that it's not as simple as that. And that this really is a team effort for just about all of the vaccines that we use. So, for example, we, we uh, immunize our children against measles. Uh, and measles disappears. We don't immunize the entire population. We just immunize the kids. That's enough to stop measles circulating. And all the other people around, including the adults who've never had measles, don't get measles. Uh, mm. so, so it's a joint effort. And it's only when enough people get vaccinated that the problems uh, of these infectious diseases go away. It's not a matter of individuals. It's a matter of everyone's in it together, just like every other aspect of this pandemic. So it doesn't. So for, so in the theory of it uh, of a vaccination for this particular virus is that it requires mass immunization, not pick and choose, as it were. Absolutely. Uh, in the end, no vaccines one hundred percent effective, yeah. and it's only when we get the, the immunity in the population high enough that the virus runs out of people to infect, that the problem's really solved. Do you see so that? It, do you, do you I, see us 
that happening? Because you know, there's a theory that this is with us forever. It could just mutate and we keep going around in this strange circle. And when more people are vaccinated or the more people are vaccinated, the virus simply thinks, hang on a second, there's no one else here to infect. So we better mutate again. Well, that does happen, of course, with flu. And I guess it will happen with this virus, but not to the extent of bringing society and our normal lives to a complete standstill the way that it has in the last year and a half. So I don't think we're going to eliminate the virus to the point that mm. it's, a, you know, like smallpox, it's just vanished from the world. Sure. But we are going to be able to get to a point where we can lead our normal lives. We can go on holiday. We can go to work. Uh, we can go to school and, and we can continue yeah. uh, to lead the lives that we want to lead. Uh, but the way to achieve that as soon as possible is to get as many people immunized as we can. So in terms of students getting the jab, do you foresee... Can you imagine in five years' time, if we're talking, Adam, this conversation won't exist anymore because it'll be gone and students won't need a jab because there'll be nothing to be jabbed for? I think that's certainly possible. It's hard to be completely sure at this point whether we're going to need to go on, you know, using adapted vaccines to some extent in the population and who in the population exactly we're going to immunise and for how long. So it's hard to be sure about that. But what I am very sure about is that we won't, perpetually be in this crisis that we've been for the last year and a half we're, we're going to get through this and get back to some more more normal kind of living uh, but the sooner we can all get vaccinated the sooner we'll get there adam thank you we appreciate your time